Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back. Kellen here from Droid Life. So, we finally got it. The Droid 3 by Motorola. There she is. There he is, whatever you want to say. Um, it's essentially the third edition of what many would consider to be uh, the greatest phone ever made, the original Droid. So, this is the third version. Uh, they've done a lot of improvements. Droid 2 is sort of just a basic bump up in specs. This thing's definitely a huge jump up in specs. It's got a 4-inch screen. It's QHD. Pentile Matrix, we'll get into that later, but it's 4-inch screen. Um, it's thinner than the original Droid, if you can believe that, with its dual-core processor, bigger screen, bigger keyboard, HDMI, all that stuff. Still thinner. Um, there they are side-by-side. Side. You can see 4-inch screen, 3.7, so it's a little bit longer, definitely wider, but thinner, supposedly a little bit lighter. Uh, what else is on there? Let's just go ahead and do a walk through the outside. Well, first of all, like we said, dual core processor. We believe it's an OMAP. They've never officially come out and say that, but it should be an OMAP 4. Um, it's running Android 2.3.4, so the newest version of Android. It's got HDMI out. We believe it just has 512 megabytes of RAM. Do not believe there's a gig. If there's a gig, they'd be bragging about it. So, um, it does have a front megapixel, or sorry, front facing camera. It's just VGA. It's not 1.3 or 2 megapixel like we've seen on the Thunderbolt and the Galaxy S2, but it does have one. Um, it's only 3G. It's not 4G LTE. Uh, it does have an 8 megapixel camera on the back that shoots 1080p HD video. It's supposed to be a much improved camera on these uh, new Motorola devices. We'll be excited to check that out. You can see it's with Google. There's no Bing or anything weird. It's Verizon. There's your big speaker. Must be a noise canceling mic there. Um, here is your HDMI port and your micro USB charger. This side we got volume rocker. On the top you got your lock switch and uh, three and a half millimeter headphone jack. That's pretty much that side of it. Obviously you have your uh, earpiece speaker right up top here. Soft keys, no physical buttons like you've seen on the Droid X. So uh, let's go ahead and bust open the keyboard and see what we got. So five row keyboard. Uh, don't see those very often, especially not on Droid phones. So physical, or I should say dedicated number row, which comes in handy for all of those of us with uh, numbers and our passwords and things like that. Keyboard itself has actual spaces in between most of the buttons. Since it's got four inch screen, they've got more real estate underneath it. So the keyboard's bigger, it's better. You know, I've typed in passwords and stuff already just to get the phone sort of set up and uh, feels pretty impressive. I actually like the keyboard so much better than the Droid 2's keyboard, which was not fun to use. Um, you can see you got your microphone button there. Basic keyboard, standard, but you do have that dedicated number row, which is which is going to come in very handy. So that's basically out. Sorry, walk through of the outside. Um, feel in hand feels pretty good. Um, being four inches, that's sort of that like prime number that a lot of people. A lot of people think 4.3 is too big, 3.7 is too small. Four feels pretty good. Um, I haven't held a uh, QWERTY slider in a while, so I'm gonna not gonna lie. This feels a little thick. But that's uh, coming from my Galaxy S2, which, as you can see, is about half the thickness. So I can't really base it off of that. I do. I will say that it feels pretty good in hand. It does feel a little bit lighter than the Droid. I haven't checked actual technical measurements on there, but it feels a little bit lighter than the original Droid. Um, overall, though, build feels really solid. Actually, to slide the keyboard out, super stiff. Obviously, that'll loosen up throughout time, but it's really stiff. Doesn't feel like going to be any issues with it giving way or anything like that. Again, only time will tell. Uh, so far though, definitely liking the look. Looks pretty sharp. Let's go ahead and boot it up. Give you guys a look. Uh, when you hit the power screen for the first time to boot it up, that dual core screen pops up instantly. There's no delay to get to the Moto logo, and that could be the uh, OMAP hard at work already. Um, oh, while that's booting, do sort of a mini unboxing if we want. So here is the... Uh, Here's the box. Not a lot going on in here. There was a screen protector underneath. You got charger, USB cable, manuals, and a SIM card in there because it is a uh, global roaming phone. Um, you cannot use it on GSM in the U.S., but you can use it overseas, South America, probably in Mexico, maybe something like that. Not in the U.S. though. It won't work on AT&T's on AT&T's network. All right, so you see boot up time pretty quick. Should be it's dual core processor again. Biggest thing here is the new blur. Okay, so we saw this teased. 
in a couple of uh, leaked uh, tutorial videos that weren't supposed to be out. It came out like two months before or a month before it was released. You can see it's a new lock screen. It's sort of cool. Um, if you want to mute your phone, all you have to do is just swipe over this little, changes it to vibrate or off, whatever you have your set to. Um, so you can just toggle that. You can see it's responsive, flips back and forth really nicely. This lock screen is actually pretty cool. Um, to then unlock, all you do is just grab this and toss it to the side. It unlocks it and takes us into this new blur. Okay, so before we jump into that though, we just want to show you some of the things we always like to show you, like the about screen. See right there, 2.3.4, newest version of Android. Not many phones out there releasing with 2.3.4 on them, so big plus one to Verizon and Motorola for doing that. Anyway, new blur. Okay, so we've seen the blue blur that's on the Droid X, Droid X2, you know, all that stuff. We haven't seen this new version though. It's almost like a 3D really light version or it could be the O map just powering through everything. There's just in the few minutes I've had to play with it, there's no lag in between screens. And I don't know if you can see this or not, but there is a 3D sort of animation that go that flips between each screen. So they've done a really nice job to really polish this up. Okay. Really smooth, really fast. The screen, I'm not sure exactly what they've used to coat the screen, just feels soft and smooth and buttery when you're flipping through screens. There's no give, there's no stickiness. Feels really nice. Um, notification bar, nothing going on there. Um, when you do get notifications, you do get to cancel those out individually, which we've seen in the last version of Blur, which is cool. You do have the dedicated dock down there, along with some new icons from... Uh, this new blur, so you've got a whole new set of icons. They almost look a little elongated to me. I'm not sure why, but they do. I'm not sure I'm a fan of the browser icon, but whatever, that's just personal preference. Um, to get into the drawer though, you just hit that square button down there bottom right, and the drawer is no longer a vertical drawer, it's a horizontal drawer. And it also has that sort of 3D page animation as you're flipping through. You can see that's really, really smooth. I'm actually pretty impressed with what Motorola's done with this new blur. Um, you can see bloatware all over, VCast, 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 Skype, Quick Office, guided tours, My Verizon, My Accounts, an IM app, Let's Golf 2, Moto Print. You know, we're going to do our official count, but uh, there's looking like there's a lot of blur. Zumo cast, all that stuff. Okay. Um, this is that blur, though, where you can set up groups. And you can actually, they already have a Verizon wireless group. Let's look at how many bloatware apps they've tossed in. Oh, come on, I know there's more than that. That's all they're showing us. I know there's way more than that. Anyway, you can actually jump straight to the market, too, just by hitting the little market button up there. It takes you into the market. It's not the new market yet. I'm sure I could update this if I wanted to. Um, standard market, you guys know how that works. Let's go back out and look more at this blur. Okay, so it's got some nice things going on. If we, um, let's say we just want to move an icon, so we long press. You can see we now get this grid. So you get a grid so you can decide where everything's going. And you know, it highlights and tells you where it's going. You can also flip pages by dragging it over here. And it actually flips pages pretty quickly. I like that. Also, if you want to replace, say, another app, say I want it where that email app is. All I do is move it in there, and it slides that email app out of the way. You can see it kicks things out of the way, depending on where you want this to go. So it's intuitive. It's a little smarter than Blur has been in the past, that's for sure looks really sharp. Um, we can also change these dock apps down there. You can see if I long press, I get pluses down there. So I can drag my browser right there, add it to dock, I can replace it. Or I can long press on that, get a list of apps, add that on there as well. So it's got some nice new functionality. We've seen some third-party launchers, things like that. Um, if we go ahead and look at widgets, see if we got anything new. You'll see a lot of the same stuff we've seen in previous blur widgets in here. Um, nothing really special. Let me go ahead and throw in this date and time one though. So date and time, you can choose clock stop, you want digital, analog, let's go ahead and do digital, done. You get a size, if we long press on that, oops, try that again. If we long press, you get arrows, so you can actually resize it to make it big. And uh, I will show you this, when you flip between home screens, you actually get this highlight animation. See that across the clock? I think it does it over here in the power widget too. See that? It's almost like a glare that shines across. It's really cool. They've done some really nice things to make this look really sharp. See that? I mean, just simple things like that to me. And as you can see, there's no 
Like I can flip through these fast. There's no lag going on here. This processor definitely cruises right through this version of Blur. So Motorola, again, done a really nice job polishing this Blur up. Um, I will say one thing. I've heard some people talk about this not really being Blur anymore. It's basically just stock Android with a blue look. I totally disagree with that. This has Blur written all over it. This is Blur. It's just a really, really nice polished version of Blur. But I don't necessarily agree that people are saying it's not Blur anymore. It's just sort of a, a, a simple overlay. I, it's Blur. Okay, it is. Um, let's jump in. Let's look at camera app has been revamped and is actually pretty cool. If we load it up here, camera app does take a little while to load for whatever reason. Um, you can see they've changed a little bit. You got your, you can flip to front camera here. You can flip to video, take your picture. It's got a zoom bar over here, so you can zoom in and out, flipping that up and down. Um, if you hit this little button down here, it brings out a tray, which is all your options. You can see you got all kinds of stuff in here. Um, really polished, just like the rest of this new blur seems to be. Looks like they still include that panorama shot, which we greatly appreciate. You can adjust brightness. You can do all kinds of stuff. It's a really sharp camera app. Just wanted to show you guys that real quick. Um, let's see what else we got. Um, dialer. You've all seen the new blur dialer. Looks nice. We're big fans of this. I sort of actually like the uh, the blue skin that they've gone with. Um, let's just see if there's anything fun. Let's go in the gallery. New gallery app. You can uh, attach it to online services like Flickr and stuff like that. Friends. You can share galleries, social networks, all that stuff. I think we've showed you that in the past. And just thumbing through here, see if there's anything else new. As you can see, NFL Mobile is preloaded, Nova. So there's tons and tons and tons of apps on here that are blower. Let's go ahead and long press on one though. If you long press on an app, actually you can uninstall, share, add to home, add to groups. So I'm gonna uninstall Nova, since that's blowware that I will never use. And now it's gone. Let's see if we can do that with NFL too. Nope, can't do it with NFL. They've obviously paid Verizon enough money. Let's Golf, you can uninstall. Obviously, these Vcast apps, there's no way you're uninstalling those. So some of this stuff you can uninstall. Some of it's built in. Yeah. All right, so I did really quickly want to show you this new Contacts widget. It's pretty sweet, actually. Um, it's got all of your contacts. You know, pulls them in from your favorites list. And all you need to do is, oops, swipe down and it unveils this like 3D. You can see this sort of 3D action going on. So pretty cool there. They've added that in. Um, other than that, that's basically just a quick walkthrough to give you guys an idea of the phone. Overall though, first impressions, we're really liking the feel of the device. We're liking the power of it. Like I said, we're going to run benchmarks later. I'm definitely excited to use the camera to see if we can get full 1080p and all that stuff. We're going to use HDMI out. We're going to give it a good run through. This is the next Droid, and it's one of the most impressive, at least spec wise, that we've seen in you know basically a year since the Droid X came out last year. Not the Droid X2. We're talking about the original Droid X. So um, definitely, uh, I don't want to say it's groundbreaking, but it feels really nice. It looks really nice. Feels good in hand. It's got power. It's definitely got specs of 2011, which we can't say for a lot of the phones that have been coming out lately. Definitely going to give it some love. Let's have a quick look here at. Uh, keyboard compared to the original droid. So you can see it just dwarfs the thing, right? Bigger buttons, five rows. Um, this is what it looks like next to Droid X2. So you can see the screen just a little bit smaller. It's a little bit shorter. Thickness wise, you can see that the hump is essentially as thick as that, otherwise a little bit thinner. But it's a keyboard, so that's sort of what we expect. Um, no 4G again, that's okay probably deal with that as long as it performs well and maybe Motorola unlocks the bootloader at some point. Anyway, we'll have more at the blog. We're Droid Life. Come back, check us out. We'll be doing a whole run through the Droid 3 by Motorola. We're out. Peace.